Good morning everyone, today we're going to be talking about why I am confident that Creative Spaces is going to be a smash hit. But before we jump into all of that, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily, so if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's be in the video. So before we talk about the creative spaces, I want to talk about a feature that we have in the game right now, and that is character creation. PSO2 hands down has the best character creator I've ever seen, and the reason I say this is because I've seen all sort of game cosplays in PSO2. You play Genshin Impact, you've seen Genshin cosplays. You play fighting games such as Tekken and Street Fighter, you've also got cosplays in game. So it's such a powerful tool that you could actually cosplay whatever character you want in PSO2, which is why I think PSO2's character creation is hands down the best. And to prove my point, recently I've been playing a lot of Honkai Star Rail because it's a new gacha game that came out from MiHoYo or HoYoVerse and I am enjoying it quite a bit. However, there are some characters that I gravitate towards, you know, of course Kafka, I know a lot of people really like Kafka, I personally really like Kafka as well, but let me show you a couple cosplays in PSO2. So over here is a Kafka cosplay from Beatrice, looks very very nice, got her SMGs, I think she's got the face and the eyes down really well and the outfit as well, it's just perfect, it looks very very nice. Then we've got another version of Kafka over here by Mafu. I like this outfit as well. I kind of wonder what this coat is. I don't actually know what coat this is, but nevertheless, this version of Kafka also looks very nice. But let's take a step back and look at March 7, aka Primo Gems over here, because uh, yeah, Anek over here did a very good job in actually getting her outfit, her eyes, and the rainbow color thing set up pretty well. So yeah, very nice. Next up, we can't forget everyone's favorite pom pom over here. This looks really adorable. I have no idea how they did it, but it looks amazing. Now, of course, we have Zila over here as well as the Trailblazer herself. Um, I haven't seen a male Trailblazer cosplay yet. Here's another picture of the female Trailblazer. They even have like the thigh band thing over here, as well as the baseball bat. Very, very nice. And this is another iteration of the Trailblazer, a close-up version of it. Very, very nice. But this Zila cosplay has to be one of my favorites. It is by Ultra Load over here. So they got the red wildfire ribbon and everything going for them. Looks very, very nice. But I think the screenshots that they get in the open world look really, really good. As you can see over here, it really looks like Zila. Looks freaking amazing, especially this one right now. This kind of reminds me of Zila when she's going into her ultimate. It looks really cool. I love how the whole color scheme is red and her eyes have also turned red. Very, very nice attention to detail. And here's a nice little bonus from Hell's Paradise. I know the girl who's taking care of Gabimaru or is in charge of Gabimaru. A lot of people were struggling on getting a cosplay of her. And I think this one did a really, really good job. They really nailed down the face and the eyes as well as the hairstyle. It looks really, really nice. Now, I'll have all of the links listed below to all of the creators that created all of these awesome outfits, so you can check them out, you can follow them on Twitter, so forth and so on. But the reason why I showed you all of these different awesome cosplays was because Sega doesn't mess around when it comes to customization. They really care about customization, and that's how their entire monetary business model is built around. It's built around fashion. The people who are spending money for the AC scratches or just AC in general mainly want fashion pieces to make make their characters look as ideal as they can, or to make their character look a specific way. And so fashion is a very, very core product of PSO2, because if they didn't have a very powerful character creator, people wouldn't be as incentivized to buy all of these different outfits, hairstyles, eyelashes, eyebrows, accessories. None of these would sell if Sega didn't have a robust character creator, which allowed you to customize and allowed you to pimp out your character to the exact specifications that you want. And so with this in mind, with the Ultra Evolution update or the Creative Spaces coming out next month, Sega is not going to drop the ball on this. The reason why they won't drop the ball is actually quite simple, it's because Creative Spaces is going to be one of their cash cows. They're going to be making a lot of money through the Creative Spaces, and that's why they spent so much time making the Creative Spaces as powerful as their character creator. It's going to be as customizable, it's very in-depth as we saw in the NGS headline, so that you can create whatever you you want within the creative spaces within your alliance quarters and they have to make the creative spaces good so that people are willing to spend more money on the AC scratches as well as the collaboration items as well as just play the game in general so that they can earn the Genesis coin so that they can purchase all of the different furnitures in order to create their ideal space. 
So we're basically expanding what our character creator is. Character creator just makes your character look really nice. Now they're expanding it to giving you a plot of land where you can create your own environment and make that your place. And so it's in the best interest of Sega to make it good because it's revolving around their business model of how they're going to be making a lot of money. So in conclusion, Creative Spaces is going to be a smash hit. It's going to be great. However, I do understand not everyone is the creative type. I am not the creative type. Whenever I play Minecraft with my friends, I literally go mining. I dig up all of the coal, the redstone, the diamond, and then I just give it to the creative people. I'm like, here you go. OK, go make something cool. And then they make all the circuitry and make all the cool stuff and then I kind of just gather the materials and I think in PSO2 I'm probably going to be doing the same I'm going to have creative people in my alliance that are going to be the ones creating all the cool stuff but they're going to need a lot of different furniture pieces in order to realize their dream so I'm just going to go out farm for whatever furniture pieces we need and then throw that into the alliance quarters and let the creative people cook and make something really fabulous special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel it really means a lot to me thank you again but yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.